1993, did you offer Eldon Hoke $50,000 to murder your husband, Kurt? You offered $50,000! He alleged that Courtney Love, Cobain's widow, had offered him $50,000 to whack Cobain. God dang, I wish I would have taken it, man. He's everybody's favorite guy. Sex offending and slipping chicks fry. Red winging with his bitch ass loose. He cast him while wasted on juice. Drunk and terror, drunk and terror. El Duce will kick your ass. In each interview, El Duce spun away, joining fans and journalists alike. But what seemed like sensational headlines also seemed true, as he placed credible sources, like the Rob Shop owner, claiming he heard Courtney doing the asking. She came up to me at the Rob Shop. At, at the Rob Shop? She pulls up out in front, and she gets out of the, the limousine. She goes, what are you doing out here? And I go, oh, but everything went even more credible as El Duce passed several lie detectors tests, one of them being with the biggest specialist in the world. Did you lie when you said you saw Obama smoke a rock of cocaine? I didn't know quite what to think. El Duce had passed a polygraph test. And then in March, Courtney allegedly called the record store again looking for Eldon. The owner said they didn't know where Eldon was. He wasn't there that day, but Courtney seemed frantic and said she had to talk to Eldon because he, quote, had a job to do. Now, this was all written in a book that was sold and made a lot of money. So take that for whatever it's worth. Richard Lee was a respected journalist in Seattle, okay? He, he was no joke. He believed Courtney had something to do with Kurt's death beginning like four or five days after they found Kurt's body. Hello, I'm Richard Lee. I'm already a television star. So as you've noticed, the name of this series of programs has tonight been changed from Was Kurt Cobain Murdered? And it is now a considerably less ambiguous Kurt Cobain Was Murdered. Richard Lee, among others, confronted Courtney Love based on a premise that she had conspired to murder her husband. But the truth was far more insidious than anyone could ever imagine. In 1993, did you offer Eldon Hoke $50,000 to murder your husband, Kurt Cobain? Oh God, you, Richard Lee, you suck so bad. Courtney, according to eminent polygraph examiner Edward I. Gelb, Oh God, Elvin you need Hulk, so need to go away. I'm getting in the car now. The highest oh, degree of truthfulness. Hey guys, according to the leading polygraph examiner, Edward I. Gelb, you can't hurt Kurt. You offered $55,000. Hey, Edward I. Gelb, you can't hurt Kurt. You offered $55,000. Hey, Edward I. Gelb, you can't hurt Kurt. You offered $55,000. Hey, Edward I. Gelb, you can't hurt Kurt. Journalists, angry for a sensational scoop, lashed on to El Duce's claims. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the tragic death of rocker Kurt Cobain. While it's already officially ruled Cobain committed suicide, like the untimely deaths of Marilyn Monroe and JFK, his passing has become fodder for conspiracy theorists. He didn't die all at once. Whoever killed him did it in stages. April 8th, 1994, Seattle police quickly ruled his death a suicide. But Grant has maintained that is not true. I honestly think Courtney had something to do with it. I've never said that Courtney Love pulled the trigger. I do believe that there were people involved in a conspiracy that resulted in the death of Kurt Cobain. He was so loaded with heroin that he couldn't even have picked that shotgun up. 
At this point, El Duce had only claimed about the offer, giving interviews to tabloids, some talk shows, and earning a few bucks out of it. But in 1997, as a big documentary was being made, he started claiming he knew who the killer was. See, I actually know the actual killer that killed Kurt Cobain. Who is? Uh, who is? Uh, his name's uh, Alan Ranch. Going back to the Alan Wrench thing, apparently this was his first yeah, interview since the Kurt mess went down. Problem. Well, the interview yeah, goes fine up until this happens. Do you feel guilty? Why would I feel guilty? Okay, here's what's up. We agreed there's not going to be any fucking Cobain shit in this. There's nobody on this fucking planet that can touch me, dude. You know what I think is funny? I'll never be convicted for the murder of Cobain. Hey, you want to think about it, fuckhead? You can't even prove I even ever met Courtney Love. I swear to fucking God, you better goddamn sleep with your fucking eyes open. And then, in a cruel twist of fate, El Duce himself was silenced forever. On a fateful day in 1997, El Duce's life came to a sudden and shocking halt. The circumstances surrounding his demise were shrouded in uncertainty. But one unsettling fact remained. Alan Wrench, a close associate of El Duce, was the last person to see him alive. The timing of El Duce's death couldn't have been more ominous. Just days prior, he had been fervently proclaiming to anyone who'd listen that Alan Ranch was involved in Kurt Cobain's demise. The things that I talked about with El Duce at Al's bar the night before he was killed, and he had mentioned some uh, names and people you were involved with, and if you're willing to discuss it with me, uh, you can call me back. This is the third time I've called, and I've left you my number three times. All right, later. Brand this down wrench, you motherfucker. Tell you what, you're gonna watch what the fuck you say, dude, because I retort every fucking phone call that's made to me. You know what I think is funny? I'll never be convicted for the murder of Cobain or El DJ. Journalists and Nirvana fans alike were quick to seize upon the eerie coincidence. And the narrative took on a life of its own, as speculation ran rampant in the media and among Cobain's devoted followers, who started threatening to kill Alan Ranch. <laughs> Why are we stuck on a 50 grand? You tell me your studio's worth 50 grand, Ducci was offered 50 grand. What's with the 50 grand? Uh, it's probably one of those uh, you know, numbers that just comes up a lot. You know, like when you play uh, craps, you know, seven keeps coming up. You know, with rock, you know, 50 grand keeps coming up for some reason. The trick is, you know, as with killing people, don't get caught. Let Satan command you. Let Satan command you. She had a vision of Satan. Saw it in her head. Let Satan command you. Let Satan command you. Yes, me. Well, a new book called Love and Death makes the shocking claim Cobain was murdered and examines evidence which implicates his wife, punk princess Courtney Love. Well, the authors Ian Halperin and Max Wallace joins us now with more. And also in our other studio, private investigator Tom Grant, whose own taped conversations with Courtney helped inspire the book. Well, a new book called Love and Death makes the shocking claim Cobain was murdered and examines evidence which implicates his wife, punk princess Courtney Love. Kurt Cobain's own grandfather also goes public for the first time in the book. Faced with threats from outraged fans, he formed the band ironically named Kill Helen Wrench and start playing on with it, even admitting he killed both Cobain and El Duce. This only a few months after El Duce died. This is Dr. Heathen Scum talking at you. Time to get the party started. <laughs> I'm a fucking founding member, baby, of the mentors and the lead guitarist of Kill Alan Rich. And I'm here on the internet now talking at you about the formation of my first international internet religion. 
That's right, the Church of El Duce. Alongside other hidden scum, the band Kill Alan Ranch launched albums in 1998 and 2002 touring all over Europe and gaining fame as a great punk metal band with some banger songs. Stole some money to buy some pot She likes to get wasted and fuck a lot She's always told to do what's right She makes lots of money cause her cunt is tight Rumors say these tours were financed by Alan Ranch's interviews to tabloids and TVs, admitting he will never get caught on the Cobain and El Duce stuff. And here's the greatest thing, I'll never be tried or convicted for the murders of Kurt Cobain or El Duce. Never. He is such a piece of crap that he used his own friend's death to gain attention for himself, to gain publicity. He, you, you can tell that he also wanted people to possibly think he killed El Duce. I think if a, El Duce could come back alive, he would probably think it's funny that Alan Wrench did that. Right now we're gonna bring on two real morons! Reverend Bud Green of the religion of drugs and this idiotic hooded monster El Duce right here. As for the whole story, well, it was all Bud Green's idea. In 1994, both he and El Duce were getting paid for saying stupid shit on TV. I've done better than hook up with Charles Manson, I've hooked up hey with guys. El Duce. Yeah! Alright, hold on, hold on. As Kurt Cobain died, and only a few days after rumors start spreading about Courtney, both decided to start saying that she offered money to El Duce to whack Cobain. And with that, they will pay for their drug and booze consumption and even promote the band. Oh, I've got the <laughs> All right. Bud Green, my good buddy. Are we on TV or what? Yeah. We're on Wa Mini and Wally, Wally George. Wally, I got one thing to say. Smoke the bud, you rich pig. <laughs> Hi, Wally. All right, come on, Reverend. The plan went really well until El Duce died. Hey, just looted the rock shop. Loot, 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 loot. Then, Alan Ranch, who was already putting on in the narrative as a joke, assumed the main role on what might well be the biggest oax in rock and roll history. To see, we'll have to see what she says. Why don't we put it's it that an way? opinion, brother. Hypothesis. There's no incriminating. My opinion, my opinion is that uh, she's a very talented and intelligent person and probably would never say anything that would get her into trouble. That's what I would say about Courtney Love on the coping thing personal take on uh, the process. <laughs> Life ain't easy being a punk rock star. I mob my fans wherever I are. I cruise around in my limousine. I'm screwing dykes that are crisp and clean. Life ain't easy when you're slamming dope. My whole band is smoking coke. I'm all fucked up in my limousine. Shoots up, gets a little depressed, sticks a shotgun in his mouth. Nothing easy 
drinking that much booze I'm doing groupies, ain't got nothing to lose I'm shooting porn in my limousine My supermodel girlfriend thinks I'm obscene show Amber Lambert backstage, the groupies are going crazy, the heroin is flowing like fucking cheap Turkish food. <laughs>